Well, welcome again to Wednesday in the Word. You know what time it is, my friend. It's time to get in this Word and let that Word get in us. I want to talk today about stop worrying about the worrisome things of life. Stop worrying about the worrisome things of life. On this what Wednesday, May the 26th, 2021, thank you always for your interest, your comments, and your words of encouragement. And if you are being helped by our studies, please share with others and keep the messages flowing down and flowing through the pipeline. Amen. So thank you so much. Uh, who doesn't remember that beautiful and that encouraging song written and recorded by uh, Bobby McFerrin that said, uh, don't worry, be happy. Beautiful tune. I love it. it says, don't worry, be happy. And that beautiful whistling tune that tends to stick in our psyche. I mean, we're remembering it. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we hear it, uh, more than likely we go throughout the day singing it or humming it or even attempting to uh, uh, whistle it. <laughs> Amen. And uh, for some of you, contrary to popular belief, uh, Bob Marley never sang that song. He never recorded that song. The song was written and recorded by Bobby, by Bobby McFerrin, not Bob Marley. But that has gotten out there on the internet uh, that Bob Marley sang it. As a matter of fact, Bob Marley died seven years before the song was ever written or recorded. But they're out there on YouTube with Bob Marley's uh, picture. He's certainly a fan of mine, uh, but he did not write this song, nor did he ever record the song. As a matter of fact, when you play it, if you find it out there on YouTube, you play it. They have the picture of Bart Marley up there, but it's actually Bobby McFerrin that is singing the song. Okay, so just a little trivia there for you uh, on this uh, Wednesday. But it is a beautiful song. I mean, it's a beautiful song, and it's one of those songs that uh, that can help you make it through the day. I mean, it can help you get over the hump. You know, and when I think about... Uh, you know, this idea of worry. You know, people are always trying to encourage one another. That's a good thing. They're always trying to encourage us. And it's obvious that we need help to navigate the challenging issues of life. I mean, and everybody, everybody from your relative to our friends, uh, uh, to your pastor, to the preachers or to teachers, to politicians, poets and singers. You know, we want you to stop worrying about the worrisome things of life. So we're always being encouraged not to worry. You know, it is believed that the American uh, theologian by the name of Ryan Hole Niebuhr wrote what is called the Serenity Prayer. I call it a poem, but it's called uh, the Serenity Prayer. And most of you learned this at an early age. As a matter of fact, some of you may have it uh, posted in your home, on the wall, on a plaque or whatever, or on a card that says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Those are beautiful words. They are encouraging words. Again, all in an effort to cheer us up, to lift our spirit, and to pick us up from being down in the dumps. We know that, that things uh, tend to wear on us and bother us and even worry us sometimes. I mean, you know, when we look around at what we have to deal with, what we have to endure, what we have to go through, the things that confront us, the things that challenge us, uh, I mean, it's no wonder that some of us are worry warts. All right? So we have all these people. You know, we have the songs that are trying to encourage us, Scripture, you know, uh, quotes for the day, daily quotes, post-it notes, email messages, text messages, phone calls, and words of encouragement, all designed to keep us afloat in a sin-sick, sinking society. Amen. And at the root of it all is the notion or the idea that there is nothing to worry about. Have you ever been told that? Have you ever told somebody that? I have been told that and I have told people that. But nothing, my friend, could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's easy for us to tell people, uh, 
don't, don't, don't worry. You don't have anything to worry about. Listen, let me tell you something, my friend. I don't really believe that anybody even believed that when they say it. I don't believe they actually think that. You don't cheer us up by telling us there's nothing to worry about. I mean, don't tell me there's nothing to worry about when I am bombarded with things to worry about. I mean, I'm being overwhelmed by things to worry about. So don't tell me there's nothing to worry about. I mean, if they truly believed that there was nothing to worry about, they would stop trying to sing us happy. They would stop trying to pick us up. If they never believed that we could be down, or if there were not things that could actually get us down, why are they still trying to pick us up? Because they know that there is plenty for us to worry about. I mean, if we tell you there's nothing to worry about, we haven't told you the truth. We're just trying to... Uh, uh, cheer you up you know, with all the wrong reasons, you know, trying to tell you that there's nothing to worry about. There is plenty. Can you say plenty? Plenty, my friend. There is plenty to worry about. There's where my next meal is coming from. There's where are my children, what are they doing and how are they doing. There's the pandemic and a host of other illnesses and diseases and injuries that I could worry about. I mean, there's a lot to worry about. There are relationships. There are bills to be paid. There's work to be done. There's the job, the career, the business. And if there would be Social Security or money for retirement, we have truckloads of things to worry about. So don't tell me there's nothing to worry about. There is plenty to worry about. There's death and the route it takes through life. There are accidents, mishaps, and tricks and traps to worry about. There's the weather, the traffic, and there's life after death to worry about. So don't tell me there's nothing to worry about. I mean, there's politics. Uh, there are schools and the education of our children uh, that, that we can worry about. Uh, there is child care, welfare, elderly care. I mean... There are responsibilities, there are accountabilities, and there are potential liabilities. <laughs> Don't tell me I have nothing to worry about. I mean, I've got plenty. I mean, if there were nothing to worry about, what was Jesus talking about when he told us not to worry, but to trust in him? That's the trick. Not to worry, but to trust in him. When we look at Matthew chapter 6, and uh, verses 25 through 34, and many of us know this very well, but Jesus tells us that he tells us not to worry, and he really tells us that there is no need to, to worry. Now, we have reason to worry, but that doesn't mean that we have to worry, okay? But Jesus tells us not to worry, and what he does is he very carefully and strategically shows us how we can stop worrying and start trusting. That's the trick. That's the thing. That's the ticket. It's for us to stop worrying and start trusting. And really, he explains it in a way that tells us that, that we have to prioritize some things in our lives. That we have to uh, sort out, if you will, some things in our lives. If we're going to get past these things that could really cause us to worry, he says that, that we, got, we got to set some priorities. We got to get some things straight in our lives. Amen? So he tells us uh, essentially not to worry, but instead of worrying, to trust in him. Amen? He tells us to trust in him. And you know, and when I really think about it in Matthew and then I think it is listed in the Gospel of, of Luke. I, maybe I think it's the only other uh, Gospel that we find this account. I, I, I may be mistaken about that, but I believe in Matthew and then in the Gospel of Luke. But in the, in the book of Matthews, um, Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And uh, I'm going to turn there and I want you to hear what Jesus, say, and Jesus says. Because these are the words of Jesus Christ himself. These are the words of Jesus, beginning with verse number uh, 25. These are the words of Jesus that we have, of course, written in our Bibles, and they are written in red to show us 
that these are the words of Jesus. Listen, listen to what Jesus tells us. Okay, beginning with verse number uh, 25. He says, therefore, and this is the King James Version of the Scriptures. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Stop worrying about your life and how you're going to be taken care of. He says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. Stop worrying about those things. Stop worrying about where your next meal is coming from. He says, or what you shall drink, uh, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on your clothes is not the life more than me and the body than raiment. He says, prioritize some things and understand, listen, my friends, what is important and what is not important or what is more important than something else. Okay, then verse number 26, he gives us some examples. He gives us some examples of how he takes care of the living creatures of this earth. Behold, the fowls are there, for they sow not, neither do they reap. <laughs> Listen, nor gather into barns. They don't store stuff up. He says, but yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Trust in the Lord. Your heavenly Father feedeth them. Listen, now he says to us, are you not much better than they? Listen to what God is saying, what Jesus is saying to us. That God places us, people, men and women of God, men and women of his creation. He places us above the other creatures of the earth. He says, are ye not much better than they? Then in verse number 27, he says, now, in all of your worrying, Tell me, what are you going to be able to accomplish in your worrying? Uh, out of all your worrying, what are you going to be able to get done? What will you accomplish? What will you achieve by worrying? Well, I'll tell you what you're going to achieve. A headache, <laughs> depression, <laughs> heartache, <laughs> despair, all of that. But he says, now, how? What, what can you do to help your situation by worrying? Nothing, nothing. Verse 27. He says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cupid unto his statue? Can you grow another foot by worrying about it? <laughs> and why take ye thought for raiment? Why are you worried about the clothes you're going to wear? He says, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Listen to what Jesus said. He says, why take ye thought for your raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And I, yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Listen, he says, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, listen, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven or cast into the fire, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye a little faith? Listen to what he says. Verse 31 says, um, he says in verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, do not worry. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether, whether, uh, whither shall we be clothed. Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. That's good news. Our Heavenly Father knows what we have need of. God is not unaware of what your needs are, what my needs are. God knows what we need. And He supplies our every need. So why are we worrying? Oh yes, worry is there. It presents itself. Worry is kind of like temptation. It presents itself. But we don't have to accept it. Okay? He says, stop worrying about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. Stop worrying about the things of life. Stop, listen, stop worrying about the worrisome things of this life. And put your trust in God. He says, your Heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But listen to verse number 33. He says, but seek ye first. Are you hearing me? Seek ye first. Say it with me. Seek, yeah, ye first, yeah, ye first, yeah. Listen, seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what happens? All these things shall be, will be added unto you. But seek ye first, my friend, prioritize things in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Then verse 34, he says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for it, for the things of itself. Listen, when we think about, uh, and that's why, that's why I'm glad God says this, because listen, that's why many of us cannot enjoy today because we're worried about tomorrow. He says, don't you worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Live for today. Live today. Enjoy what you have right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Now, he's not telling us not to plan. He's not telling us not to prepare. But he's saying to us, don't worry about the things of tomorrow. Okay? As a matter of fact, he puts it, he puts it, well, let me read what he says in the way he says. Uh, verse 33 again, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. And then listen to that last line. Sufficient unto day, unto the day is the evil thereof. And you know what Jesus is saying to us? In so many words, Jesus is saying to us, listen. You got enough to be concerned about today without worrying about tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. Yes, my friend, we have plenty to worry about. But do we have to worry? No, absolutely not. We don't have to worry. We've got plenty to worry about, but we don't have to worry. Amen. We have a choice in the matter. The Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 9, when Paul, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote to the uh, people of God at Philippi, people who were, who were discouraged, uh, who were down uh, to some extent, people who their morale may have been a bit low. And then Paul says to them, rejoice in the Lord Always, and again I say, rejoice. Hallelujah. He says to rejoice, to praise God, no matter what you are going through. Listen to what he says. He says, rejoice, and again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Philippi, or Philippians, I should say, uh, chapter number four, uh, and beginning with verse four, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Listen to what he says. Let your moderation be made known unto all men. And I believe that what Paul is saying there, don't panic, but let people see how calm, cool, and collected you are by trusting in the Lord and by not worrying about your situation. All right? He says now, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. God is right there with you. Listen, be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Don't you worry about a thing. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Listen to what he says. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall what? Shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Do you need to be kept? Oh yeah, you need to be kept. I need to be kept. Otherwise we lose it. I mean, we would really lose it. But listen, God tells us in his word not to worry, but in all things by prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. I don't care how many people are losing their head. You don't have to lose yours. <laughs> all you and I have to do is trust in the Lord. Then in verse 9, the apostle Paul uh, says to the church at Philippi, uh, uh, let me back up. Let me, let me go back and, and, and read on down. I'm, I'm sorry, I've jumped ahead of two or three verses there. Uh, verse number eight, he says, uh, 
Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Listen to what he says now. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Finally, my brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things, listen, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, Listen to what he says. If there be any praise, then put your mind not on the things that you need, not on things that can worry you, but listen, put your mind on these positive, helpful things in your life. He says, uh, 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 lift up your thinking. <laughs> All right? Lift up your thinking. Stop, stop worrying about your problems and your issues in life and put your trust in God and think on the good things that God supplies for you. Think about the good things that God does for us. Amen. And then verse 9, he says, uh, those things which you have both learned and received and heard, seen in me, do it, and the God of peace shall be with you. He says, I am your living example. That's what he was saying to the people of the time. I am your living example. All that you've seen in me, heard from me, all that I've taught you, all that I have shown you by example. He says, listen, I want you to think about those things. What you've seen, he says, I want you to do it. And then when you do it, the God of peace, the God of peace shall be with you, my friend. Shall be with you. Stop worrying about the worrisome things of life. Stop worrying and put your trust in God. Worry, you already know this. Worry, worry will make you sick. It will get you, it will discourage you, it will depress you. Worry is not good. Okay? So again, I want to go back this go back to this idea that we tell each other, uh, you don't have anything to worry about. Stop worrying. Oh, yeah, you got plenty to worry about. I want you to stop worrying, but you got plenty to worry about. So let me tell you a couple of things about worry, and then we're going to get out of here. Listen, my friend, come out of denial and press your way into deliverance. Did you hear what I said? Come out of denial. You don't have anything to worry about. Oh, yes, I do. I am not going to deny that I have plenty to worry about. Let me tell you something. Sometimes through our denial, we deny God his glory. <laughs> when you deny that you have a problem, you deny that you have a God who can handle your problem. Amen. Come out of denial. Listen, come out of denial. When you have God on your side, it's all right to say, I'm hurting, I'm down, I'm depressed. Whatever the case might be, I have plenty to worry about. But God, that's it right there. But God, my trust is in God. Yes, I can worry about this. I can worry about that. But I choose to focus on God. I choose not to focus on my problem. And I choose to focus on God. I choose not to deny that I have a problem. But I choose to put my trust in God. So you got to come out of denial and press your way into deliverance. Are oh, you hearing me, my friend? Come out of denial. Stop walking around. And, 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 and when we tell you you have nothing to worry about, don't listen to us. <laughs> okay? Because we're not telling you the truth. As a matter of fact, you know better than I what you have to worry about. And I know better than you what I have to worry about. So I can't tell you uh, you don't have anything to worry about. And you surely can't tell me that I don't have anything to worry about. I know I have things to worry about. I'm the one that can worry about them. I know they're there. <laughs> but I choose to trust in the Lord. All right, listen to what I'm saying to you now. I want you to take deliberate steps. Listen to uh, reduce and control stressful situations in your life. Take deliberate steps. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Deliberate, purposeful steps to reduce and control stressful situations in your life. Let me go on down. Let's look at the second thing that I want to tell you about worry. 
Don't create cause for worry. Listen, stop being your worst enemy. Stop painting yourself into a corner by creating or allowing avoidable stressful situations to take up residence in your life. Stop it. I mean, stop it right now. <laughs> okay? Stop painting yourself in a, into a corner. And you know that so many times we create stressful situations by making poor decisions, by poor judgment, and we just create more problems for ourselves. You got enough to worry about. Stop creating problems and giving yourself things to worry about. Stop creating stressful and worrisome situations. And you know we do it. You know we do it, all right? Third thing I want to say to you uh, today. Worry is always an option. Now, I know we like to say what's well, not an option. Failure is not an option. Defeat is not an option. Worry is not an option. Oh, yeah. And I know we say that, but everything is an option, okay? <laughs> you know, we say failure is not an option. Well, we what we mean by that is we don't want to accept failure. We want to keep pressing till we get the victory. Uh, but, yeah, that's an option. Okay, I mean, that's like saying dying is not an option. Oh, yeah, it's an option. <laughs> okay, worry is always an option, but it is never your best option. You have options. You have other alternatives. And the main one is stop worrying and put your trust in the Lord. All right, worry is always an option, but it's never your best option. Choose uh, whether you're going to worry or whether you're going to trust God. Choose whether you're going to concentrate on the negative or whether you're going to concentrate on the positive. Choose whether you're going to live in defeat or you're going to live in victory. That's your choice. I can't make it for you. You have to make that choice for yourself. Okay? So worry is always an option. Stop. Come out of that denial. Stop lying to yourself because we know better. All right? Worry is always an option, but it's never your best option. Worrying is not going to get you anywhere but sick. I mean, it, you're just going down with worry, okay? Watch this now when we talk about worry. Uh, number four, worry is an ever-present challenge that has to be. Please hear me now because uh, worry is always there. You know, uh, uh, let me say it this way. There's always a potential for worry. There's always a potential for worrisome uh, situation. There's always potential for some worrisome things to enter into our lives. So worry is an ever-present challenge. It is a challenge. Everybody say it with me. Say challenge. Challenge. Okay? Worry, which means that, here's what I mean by that, is worry is something that we will always have to deal with. Okay? Always. It's, it's, a, it's an ever-present challenge means we always have to deal with it. So here's what I want to say to you. Even though worry is an ever-present challenge, there is a way that you and I, through our discipline in the Word of God, through our faith in God, our trust in God, we can control it and we can contain it. Okay? Worry is always going to be around. It's ever-present. But we don't have to engage it. We can control it and we can contain it. In, in other words, we can, we can have control over worry and not let worry have control over us. And we can contain it. We can keep it from spreading, you know. And, and, and every time we resist worry and trust God, it builds our faith a little bit more. We get stronger in the Lord. And then we're better able to fight worry down the road. All right? And, uh, and we have to be disciplined. Disciplined in the Word of God. Disciplined in faith. Disciplined in trusting God. We have to be, make, make up our minds and, and, and have the resolve that I am not going to allow worry to get me down. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put my trust in the Lord. I am not, I'm not worried. Those, remember those things I can change? Change it. Yeah. When you can do better, do better. When you can change things, change them. But there are some things that are out of our control that we have to just trust in the Lord. 
Okay, let, let me let me close by building on that. <laughs> let me close by building on that. You know, I said word is an ever present challenge for us that we have to uh, control and that we have to contain that we can control and that we can contain. Amen. All right. And I, I, I'm going to, you know, for, for my fifth point, I'm just going to elaborate on the fourth point. Word is a natural neighbor but should not be allowed on your property. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, in real life, we want to be neighborly, okay? But we don't want to be neighborly to worry. We don't want to be neighborly to evil. We don't want to be neighborly to the devil. <laughs> you know, in real life, we want to be neighborly. Worry is a natural neighbor, but should never be allowed on your property. <laughs> Amen. A amen. You know, and this is one thing I learned. You can't play with the devil. You can't flirt with the devil. You have to be firm in dealing with the devil. And that's why, you know, when I talk about evil, when I talk about people that, that purposely and deliberately commit evil and, and hateful people, I, I, I don't take it easy on them. Don't, don't be telling me to calm down. Don't be telling me, well, well, that's a little harsh. Let me tell you something, my friend. I care absolutely nothing about the devil. Please understand that. I am not trying to be nice to the devil. No way. No way. All right? And I'm not trying to be neighborly to worry. <laughs> worry is a natural neighbor, but we should never allow worry on our property. Let me tell you something about worry. You don't defeat it one day and never have to worry about it again. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. You don't defeat uh, worry today. And then you say, uh, you, you can't walk around and tell everybody, uh, I'm worry-free now. I, I, I beat worry last week. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Look out your window. <laughs> worry is still out there. Now, hopefully worry is on its side of the fence and not on your side of the fence. But you haven't beat worry. Worry is still there. So don't you fool yourself by thinking, oh, wow, I, I had counsel yesterday and I got rid of worry. I, I read the Bible. I, I heard a message. I, I was in Bible study with Pastor Whitehead on Wednesday. Uh, and now I'm worry-free. Take a look out the window, my friend. Worry is still out there. Waving at you. And worry, you know what worry's got on its mind? Where I'm going to get you. <laughs> but put your trust in the Lord and stop worrying about the worrisome things of this life. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you so much that we have an answer for worry, and that's trust. Trust in the Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. We come now, Lord, to ask you forgiveness of all of our sins and pray, God, that you would cleanse us of all unrighteousness and restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. Thank you, Lord God, that if we seek you first and your kingdom, you will add all these things to us, whatever our needs might be. And we thank you for that. Bless us now and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate so much you joining with us on... Um, uh, YouTube and on uh, Facebook and always I appreciate you joining us and I ask that you you know uh, uh, like and share and uh, subscribe and all that stuff and help us to uh, be a help to others okay we're here to spread the word of God and I appreciate so much all of your encouraging words uh, and uh, all of your attempts to keep me from worrying <laughs> thank you so much I appreciate that and uh, and I do appreciate your comments now, I post information online on uh, YouTube and on Facebook, uh, but other than that, I really don't communicate. I read your communication, and I'm always encouraged by what I see and what you're doing, uh, but I put the messages up there. My whole thing is just spreading the word of God and, and, and preaching the messages and talking to people about things in life uh, that I believe that we ought to be concerned about, okay? So please keep me in your prayers, and thank you again for all your support, and just know that I... I see you 
and I'm hearing you, I'm listening to you, and I love you, and I appreciate you, okay? God bless you, and may God keep you. Be safe. I hope to see you in church on Sunday. You know what time Sunday school is? 9 o'clock. Worship, what? Yep, 9.45. Hope I can see your face in the place. But if I don't see you on Sunday, I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. God bless you.